It is the largest estuary in the United States. See if it's any better this time. And for many decades, its oyster harvests were the largest in the world. Oysters hauled out of these waters were once shipped to the cities of the East Coast, the ranchlands of the Western Plains, the gold fields of California, and even the restaurants of Europe. Ain't got no better! Since the mid-1800s, tens of thousands of commercial fishermen in Maryland and Virginia have hauled hundreds of millions of bushels of oysters out of Chesapeake Bay. They were fishing on oyster bars that probably once looked like this. Before European settlement, before a century and a half of heavy harvesting, the historic oyster reefs of the Chesapeake like the coral reefs of the Caribbean, form huge living underwater structures. Dense clumps of large oysters crammed together over time into vast underwater reefs. After a century and a half of heavy harvesting, and after four decades of oyster disease, All right, guys, let's go. what's happened to these great reefs? We wanted to find out. We wanted to show other people what the bottom of the bay looks like now. see the bottom now are scuba divers and they only get to see it on fairly calm days we started by sending scuba divers down to observe these historic bars punch, punch me in the chest you're gonna go down look for oysters figure out where they are come back up and we'll talk about how to sample them okay all right go for it Once you get down to the bottom, put a quad, uh, drop a quad. We began experimenting with a variety of underwater cameras. Check in with your com gear, please, over. We found most of the reefs broken down scattered by fishing. Watermen call this barren bottom. We found many horses dead from diseases, like Dermo and MSX. There's one clump. And they're dead oysters, basically. Oysters that have been uh, that have died and their shells are still articulated. They're still stuck together. This is what most of Maryland's historic oyster bars look like now. A few worms, some scattered shells. Compared to the rich community that was once here, little is left. Today the oyster population is about 2% of what it was 100 years ago. The great reefs have been broken down and scattered by heavy fishing. Thousands of acres have been buried by sediments and then diseases have killed many of the remaining oysters. Yeah. 
Today, watermen still go dredging and tonging in Chesapeake Bay. But it's a lot harder finding oysters. fishery has, I think, driven home the idea that, well, we need to try something new and innovative. We've been trying to bring uh, hatchery techniques and innovative oyster culture techniques to the Chesapeake Bay. The bay's changed, and what we're trying to do is to use hatcheries to rebuild some oyster reefs. The watermen, the, uh, the fisheries managers, the scientists, uh, even though we have had some disagreements over how things should be done, we've all realized that we're after the same goal, which is to try to get more oysters back out there. We've got a severe problem with our oyster population. The process is we bring broodstock in from the river, we put them on a spawning table, raise the temperature, we try to trick them into thinking spawning is occurring. We will stimulate the animals with gonadal product from a couple of animals that we sacrifice. That usually stimulates spawning activity. The oysters in their normal pumping activity sense gonadal product in the water. And then they start to spawn. Usually a male or two will go first. A male, if you can visualize my hands as the shells, will blow sperm out the side in a steady stream. When a female spawns, her shells will kind of open up. And she'll clap. And a big pulse of eggs will come out. Eggs will pulse out. You will see a chain reaction. Uh, so they have to spawn in synchrony get this chain reaction going and if it happens the way it, a good spawn normally happens it's pretty neat. Imagine a million animals out on an oyster reef going at the same time. When each of these females if we produce about 25 million eggs the numbers of larvae that potentially can be produced from a mass spawn in nature or mind-boggling. This, this has an excellent chance of surviving to grow up to be a, a, a three, four inch oyster. Okay. You can see there is at least 250 oyster shells in one of these bags. They're about a third of a bushel each. Can we restore the great oyster reefs of the Chesapeake Bay? A lot of people want to try, including state agencies, federal agencies, and dozens of citizens groups all around the Bay. The big question is how do we restore these oyster bars? We don't know yet. There are still lots of questions to answer. For example, since oysters stimulate each other to spawn, There's your pile. they should be planted close together. But how close? On an oyster reef at the bottom of the bay, what's the critical mass needed to get a chain reaction started? To answer that question, the Department of Natural Resources created two kinds of...